All right, all right. Welcome back. It is your lads here at the Daily Close. Hope everyone's doing well, but we are doing very great because it is KNX QTR and Crypto Pleb here at your service. And for this video, we have technical analysis. We're going to be covering over the key BTC and ETH and give an overview of the market because as many of you have seen from the night before, there was a bit of a dump. And that also means there's a bit of an opportunity. So let's talk about it here. Um, but just remember that this is not tenant, this is not financial advice. So, you know, whatever we say here, please do your own research. It's your money. So please take care and take due diligence. But also um, please like, subscribe, you know, hit that bell notification so the first to know when we come and do content. Um, you know, your engagement, we love it. We always try to get back to you as much as possible as well. But without further ado, let's jump right into it. And I'm going to show you the chart for BTC. There we go. Okay. And let me just spread that out. All right, well, first, you know, uh, I'm going to start off with um, Bitcoin uh, dominance chart here. Talk about how much money's uh, in Bitcoin versus uh, other currencies right now. Um, and I'm looking here at the daily right now. Yeah, right now, I mean, um, it seems like even though there's, you see like maybe a lot of dumps and all that you might see a lot more people moving towards BTC, but we also see that there's a little bit more, a little less uh, money flowing into BTC. This could uh, go for a number of reasons. Some things I found is uh, because, yeah, in the United States tapering um, of the monetary policy uh, by the Fed, people are taking some money off the table, same thing for Christmas time. It's just that time. And that might be just marked by um, less money being in BTC at this time. But at this stage here, I mean, you know, we're just right above the support here. If you can see from my dotted line here as well, we are over, getting into oversold territory here on the stock, RSI, sorry, stock. And we're also the bearish zone here in the RSI as well. And we're definitely under this 12-day uh, average that you just set up here as well. So, I mean, there's a, I mean, this is technically a lower high, depending on the next coming days. If we're able to bounce off this part here, we might, uh, more money might be going back into the market. But, you know, at this stage, we might just carry on um, this little bit of a bearish uh, sentiment for a little bit longer. If not, if better, consolidation, but I don't expect it to reverse anytime soon. But that's just with the daily here. I'm kind of more interested to take you into uh, BTC USD itself. So this is where we get to see the actual price action here. And while well, look at that chart, that is a uh, that wick down. Let me just move this off the way here. Uh, BTC actually wicked down. Uh, yeah, that's yesterday. Wicked down to about 41. Yeah, 41,545. So whoever caught that knife, um, yeah, you might be in luck if it continues up. But right now, the market, there's a little bit of uh, fear going on in the market here. Just from a daily perspective, I mean, we still have, I mean, yeah. I mean, our higher highs are still higher. I mean, we haven't gone past, let me just drop these major lines here so we can actually better visualize this. In one moment, I say, yeah, probably right there. Oh, that's a beautiful line, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I mean, we, we basically came back to test what seems to be a major support. So we're actually quite lucky that that held. Um, moving up into here into the stock here as well. Um, just move it back here. Yeah, I mean, it is a bit more favorable than it was from yesterday, obviously, last week back in November. But just recently, we just crossed back above um, this line here. So we're trying to move back up north to the bullish area. But I mean, we're still in the bearish uh, control zone here as well. So I don't expect any huge movements. Same thing here. Um, yeah, in terms of volume and interest, I mean, we're starting to open back up. Um, but that was just that's just relative relative to the massive dump that we just had because this is direction agnostic. Uh, look at the other indicators; it just uh, looks like there's just a little bit 
uh, there's a lot of action recently that's still playing from this chart. Maybe going from here, um, I almost expect you know, a little bit more trepidation just based off of the daily, uh, if not a little bit of a bearish sentiment moving in, especially because volume at now, at currently today, is much, much, much lower than the average that's playing out here. I want to take a look at our, just get rid of here. So yeah, we haven't crossed below the 200 SMA and EMA as either. So, you know, we're still in the game. <laughs> we haven't had that death cross yet, but I mean, we are not too far off through your two. So we really got to depend on the uh, bulls to jump back into the game to, to keep us here in the fight. But yeah, we have started to cross below uh, the other moving averages I have set up here, the 9, 21, 55, 89 um, as well. Um, so it is cause for concern. Okay, let's take this off here. Yeah, let me, based on the daily, we want to see a few more um, candles start to confirm the next level. Ideally, let's see. If I were to look at this here, I mean, that's basically where we're yeah, basically trading at, you know, just around this level of support here. Now, um, so the next couple of days, you just want to see that. And actually, let me just, that's probably so small a part, barely can you see it. <laughs> Yeah, the next couple of days, you just want to see if this support actually holds for us here. And then if we can have a, preferably an engulfing candle opening up on, on the next few days, then we might be able to get back into the game and then start, you know, testing the previous uh, resistance levels um, if we can keep going up. So uh, in the short term, probably look for a little bit of consolidation, but let's move to the four. Four hour here as well. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit more action here, more activity. This is likely pointing to people getting into the fight um, as we're starting to open back up. Still, um, the BBWP is, I think, trailing on the previous huge volume liquidations. Um, all the liquidations that was occurring um, last night for people being in over leveraged positions. Thank you guys. <laughs> but yeah, here as well on the four hour, yeah, we are starting to cross down again. So perhaps this might be a bit, bit of a short-term fallback here, but I don't see any major um, not confluence, but any kind of discrepancies. Um, can't actually, the word has escaped me, but there's nothing strange about this chart here. Everything's just falling. Um, Divergences. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I was, uh, I was praying for you. <laughs> come. But um, yeah, there's no major divergencies coming up here as well. So this just seems just in line with how things are playing out at the moment. This almost exact level where we just just literally holding around 49 right now. Um, this actually might just continue for the next number of hours. Possibly next week once we get back and um, once I guess the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange opens. Um, my Shifu uh, told me that that will have an impact as well. So if I see a gap in the actual price, but let's move it down to the one hour. So maybe in these kind of times, it, when we have some consolidation and it's just bouncing around the range, it's a good opportunity to make some scalping trades. But even here in the short term as well, it's still the trepidation kind of continues and there's not really much variance between these levels. And even the stock is pointing down RSI also pointing down as well. Here on the one hour chart, you see not any major divergences going on here. And here as well. Okay. And we do see, yeah. And now because we're on the one hour taking back previous data, we're seeing a bit more of a consolidation down at this stage. So we'll have to see. Maybe next week we might see an actual movement, maybe on the one hour. Coming up to my CT Mac here again. Yeah, I mean, on the uh, lower time frames, we obviously we passed uh, you know, the two hundred uh, SMA EMA. So that's uh, from before as well, taking back more previous data. So I like to see us cross back up here again if we're going to have a bit more of a long term bullish sentiment. But right now, we're just 
on the one hour we're trading below. Yeah, that's what I'm probably looking at here. I mean, if I, I think at this stage here, I just want to see if there's any more kind of ranges going on, then I might want to try to make some effort to take a few small percentage points up here. And this is going down at the lowest level as possible. Yeah, I'll probably put another line here, another trend line there. Perhaps we might see this, depending on how we say that. I mean, both the Stokes pointing up, our side is pointing up. Uh, we're starting to have a bit more action coming up to the upside here. Uh, BBWP, so there's a bit more interest. Volume is still incredibly low. So I probably want to say, keep close eye around this level to see how this plays out. Uh, we might be able to see. All right, look at this here. I mean, yeah, if we were to bounce off this level here on the 49, maybe we might start picking back up. But on the higher time frames, which typically take pre uh, precedence, I think there's going to be you know quite a bit of consolidation going on um, in the next couple of days. So I suppose if I were anybody, you know, um, next target is, you know, if we, you know, if we were to fall back down here, we'd probably be down at 48. Um, if we don't hold that level, then yeah, perhaps we might you know fall a lot further down. Um, to the 47 range um, is what I would look at. However, I mean, if we can close above here in a strong way and get some more volume, perhaps we might get be able to recover uh, what was lost in a sense. But you know that's that's what I'm looking at here uh, for BTC overall. I'd say um, I expect some consolidation. There's a lot of trepidation and fear in the market, so we want to see what's going to play out uh, in the next coming weeks to really see where the next best entry to go long on. Um, if you're going short, this is your market because the bears are doing well. But that's my part here, so I'll move it on over to uh, KNXQTO. Yeah, Excellent. Um, thanks, Crypto Pleb. Um, let's uh, let's cover ETH um, quick as well. Let me share my screen. Uh, let me see. Okay. Is that shown correctly? That should be on the ETH chart right here. That's right. That's right. Okay, great. So let's um, take a, a look at the macro view and the macro standpoint um, on ETH. So here I'm on the, the monthly chart, the monthly candle. So each candle represents one month. And so this is the month of December. We literally just um, started this uh, a few days ago. But you can see that we closed last month very in, in a very you know bullish posture. Um, one thing that I, that I wanted to point out is if you look at the BBWPs, you know as long as we are closing above um, the, the the top side of the uh, of the Bollinger Band, you know that's a trend in motion and trend continuation. And last month we did close above the uh, the top side of the Bollinger Band, which does imply that we will be seeing new highs. I'd say either you know, this month or next month is, is very, very likely. Now, this month so far, what have we done? We've come down, we've backfilled the, uh, the monthly open of November, and we have come down to test the, uh, the nine moving EMA um, here. So we still have 26 days and a lot can happen in, in 26 or 27 days, but I do expect this to, you know, maybe this month, maybe next month to make new all-time highs, um, you know, for, for ETH and, you know, if we're looking at sort of targets, um, if we take, you know, actually we've met all the sort of targets there. We're currently, yeah, we we topped out at the, the 2.618, which is what you want to see. Next targets, probably looking at around five, 5,500, um, you know, and, and further down the line, maybe 6,500, 600-ish as well um, in the next month or two. Um, having said that, things could, you know, consolidate for a little bit further here, but on the monthly chart, this is looking um, very, very bullish and very good. Um, the RSI remains in the um, the bullish control zone. Um, you know, as long as we're above three thousand two hundred, uh, we're nowhere near that now. We did work down to three thousand five hundred, three thousand four hundred and eighty ish, um, and I wouldn't invalidate any sort of bull bullishness on this uh, this monthly chart. Uh, as long as we're above this level here, let's say around $3,000, um, you know, I remain macro 
uh, macro bullish on this on the monthly at least. That's not to say that we can get you know 20-30% pullbacks. Um, that's just to say that in the long term, in the next six, 12 months, um, I'm looking for, for Ethereum to trend higher and, and make new all-time highs. Um, let's look at the weekly. Um, the weekly is showing multiple drives of bearish divergence of which we have played out here. Um, I do suspect us to retest the lows of this range. Um, we did have a nice bounce off the, the 21 EMA on the weekly here, um, which is what you want to see in a bull market. You can see we tested it once, twice, three times, four times. Um, this was your May, June dump here, and we did close several weekly candles below it. Um, but you know, the following week managed to regain that 21 um, EMA moving average. So we are, have been using this 21 EMA, the blue line, um, you know, very well. We've, we've been using it as support very well on, on a weekly channel, but we are we have seen multiple drives of bearish divergence as indicated by the red sort of lines at the top here. Um, and we have played a move out um, so far. And I do, as I mentioned, I do expect us to probably test the lows again. Um, you know, testing anywhere, testing about 4,000, uh, maybe 3,600 again is, is something that's, um, you know, realistic. Um, on, on the Stokes, we are pointing down um, and we'll be remaining down um, unless we manage to confirm this as a low low here. Volatility, um, something of interest is that when you see price making higher highs, you want to see volatility making a move upwards or uptrending in volatility. And we did not see that here. And that combined with the bearish drives of divergence meant that we have seen a, a bit of a, a pullback now. Um, and I do expect some consolidation to happen uh, in the coming days and weeks before moving higher. On the daily, um, you know, we are playing around that 55 EMA, um, which is, again, has typically been pretty good at, when we're, we're trending in the bull market. Um, We've tested it a few times here. We've mainly used the 21, the blue line again, as the sort of main support line. But once we start to fail that, we then use the, the 55 EMA as, um, as support and also um, as resistance right now. Um, as you can see that we, we haven't quite got above that on, on the daily. Um, what are the, what are, what's the RSI showing? RSI is showing um, that we are in sort of like the neutral zone right now. Um, it's not really giving me any signals at the moment. Um, daily stokes are pointing down. Looks like it's losing a little bit of its downside curvature. Um, I do expect to see see bounces from this region um, anywhere up to 4,350. 3,450 is, is fair game. Uh, but as long as we are below that, um, I do see this as um, sort of like a range playing out. And if you were to draw sort of like the your standard trend lines on here. We are seeing a little bit of a descending triangle. Um, and these are typically, do typically break to the downside. The probability of it breaking to the downside is, uh, you know, is higher, um, but that's not to say it can also break out the top side. And the measured target of this would be, um, you know, back down to where your 200, 200 symbol is uh, almost perfectly, which is around three thousand two hundred dollars. So if it does break to the downside, um, you know those are the targets to to look out for. Um, and on the four hourly as well, let me just get rid of these um, trend lines. We have made our way below all moving averages on the on the four hourly. Um, on this move back up to test the. Um, test the 21 and, and the 13, we have seen volatility come up as well and are ex at extremes at the moment. Um, and typically after a move like this, you do see a, um, at least, uh, I mean, at best consolidation, at worst, uh, a move back down to test your lows, which I do think will happen at some point. Um, but for now, the stokes are pointing upwards. Looks like it's losing, losing its um, a bit of momentum and its upside curvature here. Um, you've got the RSI moving out of the, the bearish control zone and into the neutral zone. Um, we won't be moving above in, into the bullish control zone as long as we're below 4,618. Um, so I don't, I don't suspect to see that anytime soon. Um, but more importantly as well, if you are a pattern trader, this, um, this sort of pattern right here is a, uh, is a bear flag. And typically that just means... Um, 
you know, continuation to the downside. Um, similarly to, to a bull flag, um, you know, they are generally continuation patterns. And, and if I was to, if I was a pattern trade now, I would say that we do see a retest back down to 3,800, 3,900. Um, and then if we fail to hold that level, then as I mentioned, you know, back down to about 3,000, 3,200 3, to 3,500 is, is the next level that you're looking at. So um, that's it for now. Um, you know, consolidation at best. I don't think we'll be making any new all-time highs soon. Uh, but as I mentioned on the macro perspective that, you know, maybe in the next month, maybe in the next two months, I do suspect that we um, do see new all-time highs very likely on Ethereum. So um, not the worst news, um, but also not the best news right now. This is a sign of a maturing market. And um, it, it is good because, you know, we that, that means the so-called super cycle is here and we don't see massive you know, exponential moves to the upside or to the, well, to the downside we do, um, but maybe not to the upside. We see a generally trending market to the upside over a number of years instead of, you know, a few months of parabolic growth. So um, overall, um, it's, a, it's a good thing. I think that we do consolidate as I mentioned, but um, on the macro scale, bullish in Ethereum. There you go. That's what's all about. As always, it's uh, your, your teachings are always insightful. And uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, stop. It's, it's, it's seafood, but no, it's it's uh it's good. It's important to look at the the, the macro, the long term range. Um, all assets are still bullish, or at least they provide big promise. Um, and that's that's why we're still in it. Not in the short term, we might see a bit more consolidation and some downside, but that's to be expected. Just as KNX QTR alluded to, it is a, or mentioned, it is a mature market, so we should be uh, thankful and you know. Just from now on, you know, try not to be so over leveraged in your positions. Um, it's from these massive cascading liquidations that we see some of these, well, it helps propel a lot of these pullbacks. So trade carefully. This is why this is not financial advice. Um, you need to make sure you do your own research, cover your butt, have your, um, you know, take profit and have your uh, um, stop losses in place. So you're not one of the few people who are holding that stinking bag at the end. But without further ado, I mean, this is um, this is the daily close. You know, we're talking about technical analysis. We're going to have this uh, every week, trying to keep on pace. And we'll keep you in the know about uh, what's happening in the market so you have some information to start your research on how to better make money and stay afloat. But please like, subscribe, um, hit the bell notification, give us a comment. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. But until then, I hope the pump may forever be with you. May the pump be with you. In perpetuity. Of course, in perpetuity. Ooh.